and inventory is back just like we expected another weekend of strong buyer demand but check this crazy stat out out of the last 30 deals that my preferred mortgage broker sammy has written 29 of them had sold prices that were higher than the asking price nearly 97 percent of all of his deals were where buyers needed to go over the asking price in order to win the bid oh and that blowout jobs report last week might have actually given the Fed the cover they needed in order to cut rates in June. How does that make sense? Yeah, we're going to talk about that. In this video, we're going to go over the single family and condo market stats in the state of Massachusetts. We're also going to do a quick interest rate update. And we're also going to talk about some relevant current events. I released my April market report video that goes over all of the data for the first three months of 2024. Talk about some impressive numbers. You should definitely take a watch. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then no, I'm here to help. Two quick highlights. We buy houses all over Massachusetts cash, fast or slow closing timelines. If you know of anyone that's thinking or looking to sell, it doesn't want to go through the hassles of that traditional way, wants a cash offer, no home inspection, then have them visit cashofferma.com. Speaking good old fashioned traditional way, we actually now offer a new economy selling program of 1% instead of the traditional five or 6%. Do you know of anyone thinking about selling their house and wanting to save tens of thousands of dollars and maybe interested in that economy package? Then I would love to chat with them. Let's jump into the single family market stats. As we knew, inventory, it shot up this week to 3,381 single family homes on the market in the state of Massachusetts. We now have 14% more homes on the market today than we did just 28 days ago. The spring market inventory increases have started and we're going to start running up most likely, well, all the way through until sometime in July. Inventory always shoots up the week after Easter. And this year, it was no different. But now we are comparing our data set to the Easter week of actually last year. We now have 480 more houses on the market when compared to this same week last year. And 732 more houses on the market than today compared to it back in the same week back in 2022. Last week, I had promised you that the inventory shortage levels were going to be short-lived. And now I can promise you that come next week, they're actually going to see these inventory gap numbers actually shrink and go back to the normal that we've been seeing in the last couple of weeks running up. Take a look at that blue line this week. New listings shot up beyond the levels that we saw last year for the week after Easter. This week, we listed 1,187 single-family homes in the state of Massachusetts. This is 512 units or 76% more than the same week back in 2023. Again, the new listing data is in comparison to the slow Easter week last year. Little asterisks there. The four week rolling average is 843 units. And we knew that under agreements were going to fall as they are the trailing indicator. This week we put 739 houses under agreement. While I knew it was going to fall, I was actually pretty impressed with the activity. This week, we put 144 units or 16.3% fewer homes under agreement than the same week last year when 883 single family houses went under agreement. Now, that four week rolling average for under agreements is 854 units. So, when compared to last year's market, new listings were up by 76%, again, asterisks, while under agreements were actually down by 16%. There were 409 single family homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $790,000 and a median sales price of $624,000. Sales levels compared to the same week last year were actually up by a half percent as there were 407 single family homes that sold this week last year for an average sales price of $725,000. Months of inventory, this is how we calculate what type of market we're in, zero to five months. That's considered a seller's market, but the closer that you can get to zero, the stronger the seller's market that it is. This week, months of inventory, it shot up to 1.8 months from last week's 1.57 months. We'd actually have to go back to the first week in June of last year to see a months of inventory level higher. Now the 1.8 months this week is compared to the 1.5 months this week last year. Real quick, it's my shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a home, then it would be a true pleasure to help you and talk with you about the process. Now onto the condo market. We have 2,254 condos on the market as of Monday. This is 12.1% more than the inventory levels on the market just 28 days ago. Just like in the single family market though, 
The inventory gap, it shot up in the condo market as well. We actually now have 274 more condos on the market than today compared to today last year. Meanwhile, we have 344 more units on the market than compared to the same time period back in 2022. There were 593 condos that came on the market this week with that four week rolling average of 462 units. Now the 593 units listed was 256 units or 76% more than 337 condos that came on the market this week back in 2023. 76%, just like the single family market. Under agreements were actually down as well. This week we put 372 units under agreement. This 372 condo sales was 27 units or 6.8% less than last year when we put 399 condos under agreement. Again, very impressive numbers. Then there's that four week rolling average for under agreements, which was 428 units. So 76% more listings that came on the market when compared to the same week last year while selling 6.8% fewer condos. There are 248 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $718,000 and a median sales price of $553,000. This same week last year, there were 196 condos that sold. So sales levels were actually up by 26 and a half percent year over year. Lots of inventory, this increased to 2.68 months from last week's 2.54 months. This is compared to the months of inventory levels of 2.19 months this week last year. Any chance you can just do me a huge favor? Can you hit that like button? It's right down there, believe it or not. It just makes a huge difference to me as well as the channel as it just plays with that YouTube algorithm. And while subscribing, if you're liking the content, then I truly appreciate you considering subscribing because that one doesn't hurt either. Time to talk about interest rates. We had interest rates move up slightly this week. It's been a roller coaster up this week, but down last week, then up the week before that. My takeaway is that interest rates, well, they're pretty relatively stable. Personally, I'm going to take stable over huge swings every day of the week. So how is it that the Fed is able to actually cut rates after a blowout jobs report? Because normally the Fed only cuts when the economy is on the teetering point or in a recession. The job numbers came in at 303,000 payrolls added. The median estimate was 214,000. It was a stellar jobs report, to say the least. So how is it that this gives the Fed some cover to possibly cut rates in June? It's because all the job gains were part-time jobs. The number of part-time jobs soared 691,000, while full-time jobs actually dropped by 6,000 jobs. Here's where the real crazy numbers come into play. Since March of 2023, the number of full-time workers has collapsed by 1.347 million. As of now, the futures market is actually pricing in around a 69% chance that the Fed will actually cut in June. I still don't think that they should. Inflation's heading in the wrong direction and don't do it. But they've said that they're more concerned with jobs than they are inflation. Therefore, that's how this is giving them cover because the Fed said it. They are willing to sacrifice a lower inflation rate in order to sustain a higher and better jobs market. And here's some bad news for the future home buyers, and one that's actually ultimately gonna factor in on home prices and then continuing to rise. Redfin studies show that older Americans who own their home are financially actually incentivized to stay put, which will likely actually worsen inventory shortage. In their survey, they found that 78% of older Americans that are ages 60 and up are planning on staying in their current home as they continue to age. Now, this matters because empty nest baby boomers own 28% of three bedroom homes in the United States. Compare this to millennials with kids that actually own 14% of all three bedroom houses in the United States. Here's another quote from the article, which was well mind provoking for me. The government isn't prioritizing building housing for seniors which is further encouraging older Americans to stay put, exacerbating the inventory shortage. Now, want more inventory? Well, we need more 55 plus and more senior communities in general. I never thought of it this way. What we know is that the shortage in inventory will continue for the foreseeable future. We aren't building enough houses to keep up with just the population growth and a shortage in supply means that prices, they're gonna continue to go up, up and up. Plus add an inflation and it means it's only going to go up even more. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Again, it's Jeff Chubb. 
whether you're looking to buy or sell a home in the next nine or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out more about your real estate goals. And if you know of anyone that's thinking about buying or selling a house, then I truly appreciate you keeping me in mind and passing along my contact information. You can visit youtuberealestateagents.com or find all of my contact information in the description below. Until next time.